Hello, everybody. My name is Sigourney, and I am the Origami Llama. Welcome back to my channel, everybody, and thank you for joining me. Today's video topic, as I promised in one of my last videos on origami doodling and plague doctor making, is renowned American origami designer Dr. Robert J. Lang. I chose to do an artist video on Lang first because he has been a huge inspiration to me from the start, and I've folded many of his models. Dr. Lang is a talented mathematician and uses his mathematical knowledge to craft lots of complex and beautiful origami designs. His specialty is insects, but he has a wide range of other animals, plants, and even origami pottery and other objects. To date, he has over 700 fully diagrammed and cataloged original designs to his name. Here is an excerpt from Dr. Lang's website. In 1992, Dr. Lang became the first Westerner ever invited to address the Nippon Origami Association's annual meeting. He has since been an invited guest at international origami conventions around the world. He lectures widely on origami and its connections to mathematics, science, and technology, and teaches workshops on both artistic techniques and applications of folding in industrial design. So, how did Dr. Lang get to where he is today? Well, he was born in Ohio and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. He started his career working first as a physicist, engineer, and R&D manager. During this period, he authored and co-authored over 80 technical publications and had 50 patents awarded on semiconductor lasers, optics, and integrated optoelectronics. He has won awards for his previous work in those fields, and today he works full-time as an origami artist and consultant. Lang has been featured worldwide for his origami and lectures on the topic frequently. What? Origami is a career? Oh yes. I think many Westerners mistakenly think of origami as a child's activity, but it is really so much more than that. Yes, it is loads of fun and can be a source of entertainment for kids, but its applications go far beyond kids' crafts. For example, Dr. Lang has been consulted on development of airbags and expandable space telescopes. There are origami flower pots that expand as your plant grows. Perhaps you've seen furniture that cleverly expands and compacts? Foldable kayaks? Robots in disguise? These things and many more use the same mathematical principles of both traditional and modular origami design to create objects capable of metamorphosing to suit the needs of, of users. This can mean having multifunctional items, items that can serve space when not in use, and of course, mathematically beautiful aesthetics. Now if you are looking to create your own origami designs, you are in luck. Not only has Dr. Lang laid out the rules of origami design in his book, Origami Design Secrets, Mathematical Methods for an Ancient Art, but he has developed a free computer program called TreeMaker that will help you create crease patterns for your intended model subject. Here's a little more on the subject from a TED Talk of Dr. Lang's. So I wrote a computer program a bunch of years ago called TreeMaker, and you can download it from my website. It's free, runs on all the major platforms, even Windows. Um, <laughs> and you just draw a stick figure, and it calculates the crease pattern. It does the circle packing, calculates the crease pattern. And if you use that stick figure that I just showed, which you can kind of tell, it's a deer, it's got a, antlers, you'll get this crease pattern. And if you take this crease pattern, you fold on the dotted lines, you'll get a base that you can then shape into a deer with exactly the crease pattern that you wanted. And if you want a different deer, it's not a white-tailed deer, but you want a mule deer or an elk, you change the packing and you can do an elk. Or you could do a moose, or really any other kind of deer. These techniques revolutionized this art. We found we could do insects, spiders, which are close, things with legs, things with legs and wings, things with legs and antenna, and if folding a single praying mantis from a single uncut square wasn't interesting enough, then you could do two praying mantises <laughs> from a single uncut square. She's eating him. Uh, I call it snack time. Um, and, and you can do more than just insects. This, uh, you, can, you can put details, toes and, and claws. Grizzly bear has claws. This tree frog has toes. Actually, lots of people in origami now put toes into their models. Toes have become an origami meme because everyone's doing it. <laughs> You can, you can make multiple subjects, so these are a couple of instrumentalists. The guitar player from a single square, the bass player from a single square. And if you say, well, but the guitar, bass, that's not so hot, do a little more complicated instrument, well, then you could do an organ. <laughs> um, and what this has allowed 
is the creation of origami on demand. I mean, so, so now people can say, well, I want exactly this and this and this, and you can go out and fold it. I actually had the pleasure of seeing his work in person back in 2017 at the Trout Museum in Appleton, Wisconsin. Here are a few of the pictures I took. So when you first walk in, you see this great big wall of crows, and it's stunning. They're all life-sized, and the details on them are impeccable. <laughs> impeccable. Sorry, I didn't mean to make a pun. It just happened. But anyway, the next thing I noticed was this other crow, cheekily stealing a little nugget of gold. But you can see the detail on the talons. Um, a little face suggested. Really fantastic detail. The next one, this great horned owl. Same thing, just the talons, the face the feathers, um, and even though uh, Robert Lang will tell you that origami is an abstraction of real life, I, he can get pretty darn close to the real thing. As you can see on this bat, the face is just fantastic. It looks real. It looks like it could fly right at you. But, uh, but yeah, origami is um, one of those things you can as an artist, you have to choose which features you want to express with your folds, which ones, um, which details are less important, perhaps. But uh, this next one is a little simpler, his Pegasus, which still very beautiful. I love the shaping he does on the head, um, and the wings look really good. But you can go anywhere from very simple and basic to very complex. So this next one of his is probably one of my favorites. It's a traditional crane on the bottom, overlaid um, by an original design of his, uh, another crane, in just magnificent, glorious detail. You can see every individual feather expressed, the, um, the tail. It looks incredible. Um, and I think it really exemplifies how far we've come in origami over the last few decades. So, according to Lang's book on design, 98% of design innovation in origami has occurred in the last 2% of the art's entire existence. The past 60 years in Japan and about 40 years worldwide have seen an origami renaissance. So um, the further you delve into it, you'll find some models that are just mind-breakingly complex. Really fascinating stuff. Um, and that's all thanks to the mathematics that Dr. Lang has been able to apply to the art to give us all of these really out of these out of this world folding. And this next one, uh, his elephant, which uh, I'll talk a little bit about his elephant as he also does in his book on design. So the elephant, as Lang notes in his book, is one of the most popular subjects of origami design. In 1988, a French artist called Alain Giorgio displayed 88 different origami elephants at an exhibition. As of 2000, he has collected about 155 elephant designs. And he was really cool. I actually reached out to him to make sure that I was pronouncing his name correctly. Um, and I will be hopefully doing a video on him in the near future as well. Uh, I got his book of origami and it's very accessible, very interesting. So we'll talk more about that later. Next up is Robert Lang's Hermit Crab, which, look at this shell, I love it. And spirals aren't a super difficult thing to achieve in origami, um, I mean, mathematically speaking, uh, they're, they're very common, but just, again, the shaping and the detail on this is, is really fantastic. Now, there is a reason Lang is known for his insect designs. So I'm going to show you some of these. There's the Harlequin beetle with its long, long arms. And the more arms and appendages um, and points that stick out on a model, the rule is uh, the, more, the, more, the more of those, the more complex the model is as a whole. So. Think about that as we're looking at these. This next one is his silver fish. After that, we've got his scorpion, which I'm sorry for the quality of some of these pictures. The lighting in the museum wasn't the best, but uh, but we'll just make do with these. I didn't want to uh, steal the pictures right off his website. 
So next we've got um, the tarantula. His rhinoceros beetle. This flying walking stick. I did really like this one. I really like all of these, but just some of them really stand out to me. His cicada. I like the detail that he put in on the body, all of the ridges, the angles of the wings. Next we've got his stag beetle, which look at all these points. All of these little all of these little legs and intricacies. It's just it's so cool. So we'll get into his flora a little bit here. We um here's a rose that I saw. And there are a whole lot of origami rose designs out there, but this one is probably among my favorites just because it's so extra complex. Um, it's very realistic. Um, the curvature on the petals that he was able to achieve looks really lovely. But yes, I do like that rose. So this next one, guys, <laughs> um, prepare to have your mind blown. This is Robert J. Lang's Cactus. And I will re remind you, this is traditional origami. This is one sheet of paper, uncut, unglued, just folding and mathematics to create this amazing cactus. <laughs> like, that should blow your mind. Look at all those points. That's complex. But moving on, we've got some of his pottery, which I really loved his pottery as well. You can see geometrical intrigue in each one. All of them are a little bit different. But yes, absolutely gorgeous. So most of these models here are folded from large sheets of hanji paper. Um, and as you can see from this next one, his lion, uh, he's very creative about his paper selection, down to the colors, textures, and thickness. So you can see on the main here uh, where the paper fringes out and um, fluffs out. Just how I thought that was very creative just to fold it so that he could fluff out and uh, the ridges on that paper to look more like a main. That's just a whole another level of expertise and artistry there that I really appreciated. I thought that was really cool. But there's a lot to consider when selecting the right paper for an origami model. Uh, delving deeper into it, it might surprise you just how many different types of paper there are. It would, or If you would like to learn more about origami paper and how to make your own, I suggest looking into Michael G. LaFosse, who will uh, be getting his own video review in the future. You can find information on his website, listed below, and his book, Advanced Origami, An Artist's Guide to Folding Techniques and Paper. It's a really good read, very informative, um, and, uh, and, and it's cool. I got to actually take one of um, Mr. LaFosse's workshops for the Origami World Marathon, and uh, he's very methodical and uh, just an absolute professional. Um, but yeah, he's he's a paper maker and an origami artist, and uh, I definitely recommend giving uh, just give, giving his website a look. So most recently, I was able to participate in an online workshop of Dr. Lang's thanks to the Origami World Marathon put on last week. He walked us through how to fold his curved propeller module, and it is so addictive to fold. Um, here are the three I have so far. Um, and this beauty is comprised of 30 identical units that interlock in the most geometrically satisfying way. Um, but yes, modulars are not Lang's typical subject, but I am hoping to see more of these from him in the future. Thankfully, he is very prolific. Um, yeah, he's a very prolific author of origami instructional books, and that brings us to his ne our next topic here. Mr. Lang, or sorry, Dr. Lang's books. Oh, man. So I only have a few of the many 
that he has out. Um, but these are definitely some of the ones you'll want to look into uh, if you're super into folding. This one in particular I recommend to any designers um, out there. This behemoth of a book, Origami Design Secrets. I know I've mentioned it a few times, uh, but this is basically the Origami Designer Bible. <laughs> it has everything you need to know. Um, he really breaks it down. Lots of really excellent illustrations and explanations. Um, and just everything on the art you could want to know more. All of these really cool crease patterns, which I do need to get better at reading crease patterns and reproducing from models from those. But yeah, this guy is 758 pages and a whole wealth of knowledge on the subject. Um, a lot of what I've learned, I have learned from this particular book, so if you're very serious about it, um, definitely check this one out. I'm going to go over real quick uh, these books that I personally have, um, give you kind of a rundown on who might be interested in them and some of the things that I like about them. So this one is really excellent, uh, Origami in Action, and it's just a creative idea. Um, basically basically origami toys or, or things that, um, models that move. So you've got your flapping crane, uh, that's a very common one, uh, flapping butterfly, inflatable water bomb, those are really fun. So a lot of these you could use, um, or you, you could do at the most basic level. You'll see next to each one there are stars indicating level of difficulty. So like this barking wolf, for instance, one star, uh, goblin clam, two stars, more complex ones like this flapping crane. So he has a lot of different flapping birds. Um, that one's three stars. I don't know if they go beyond three stars of difficulty. They might? No, it looks like three's the most. So, um, but yeah, there's all different levels, which I like about that. You can, it's, it's accessible for beginners or for advanced folders. Um, it's something you can use to advance your folding. So start out with the easy ones and just kind of work your way up and explore. And it's a fun way to explore the models too. Um, yeah, you can see really excellent, um, illustrations again, which that's an art in itself. Harlequin cootie catcher. Is that <laughs> I've always called them fortune tellers, origami fortune tellers. That's funny. Harley Quinn cootie catcher, guys. <laughs> I think that's my new favorite. But yeah, there's some really fun ones in here. Um, all sorts of different toys. Uh, this one would be really good, I'd say, like, for kids. But, I mean, age doesn't matter in origami. Just fold whatever catches your fancy. So this next one was actually a collaboration of Robert Lang and Stephen Weiss and uh, zoo animals. So I really, that that's probably one of my favorite things to fold. I really love folding different animals. Um, I mean, modulars, as I pointed out, are also a ton of fun and super satisfying, but, but I'm an animal lover, so I've always enjoyed folding all sorts of different creatures and capturing their essence in paper. And some of these are really cool. I, I think I've folded a few of these. I have definitely folded the lion. I've folded the alligator. Let's see. The uh, uh, praying mantis as well. Ooh, and the giraffe. But yeah, there are a lot of really fun ones in here. So the illustrations aren't um, as vibrant as some of his other ones, but but they're still very good. I mean, you'll you'll still be able to follow these very concisely and produce the model. And uh, each of these 
has, um, let me see if I can find it. Getting started. So yeah, he, he goes into detail about paper, um, talks about different techniques like wet folding. Goes over all the symbols, so valley folds, mountain folds, um, what each of the little symbols means. So there's a whole language, um, origami language, uh, represented in symbols for, for different um, instructions. And we can thank Akira Yoshizawa for that. Famous um, and well-beloved Japanese origami artist back in the day. This next one is his origami insects and their kin. And I really enjoyed this one. So from this one, I'll just show you one of the models I folded. This is his ant. And uh, I used a great big giant piece of paper. I don't remember what kind of paper this is. I really need to start keeping track, but I loved how this one came out. Um, I initially folded this to a, I wanted to post on a silly Facebook group I joined where we all pretend to be ants. Lift it to our queen. But yes, this is one of his insects and it took a few hours to fold, um, but it was well worth it. There's some really cool ones in here, and like I said, I'm not super into insects, but I mean, these are so much fun. They're they're challenging, but this one is definitely more for uh, advanced folders. So if you're a beginner, I don't recommend starting out with his insects because they get pretty crazy. And like I said before, the more points a model has, typically the more complicated it is to fold or the longer it'll take to fold. But yeah, he just has a lot of excellent information in these. The key again, um, going over all of your basic folds and terms and symbols that you'll need to know. So, very useful. And yeah, the pictures in this one are alright too. You will definitely be able to produce your model with no problem. There's the ant. I saw somebody recently who po or, um, they folded one of these ants from a 21 centimeter piece of paper and like so let's see 21 centimeters like yay big that's a really small piece of paper for that last model that I showed you and then last but certainly not least his complete book of origami step-by-step -step instructions in over a thousand diagrams so these diagrams are no joke <laughs> But uh, from this one, I produced his reindeer. The paper's a little thick for this guy, but I still really like how it turned out. The horns, um, the horns were pretty complicated, which I, I enjoyed the challenge of that. But yes, this is my Rudolph. There he is. So this one again, um, it's the complete book of origami. So there are more complicated models like that reindeer I showed you, but there are also much simpler ones like this duck and fish, a cap, very basic ones that um, would be very good for beginners. Oh yeah, that's another one I folded from here. It, um, it starts out with a triangular base like that, so I mean, if you've got one piece of paper that splits into two triangles, you might as well fold two kangaroos. I like that one. But yeah, the drawings are pretty, um, oh yeah, I did this one too. It's not as good. I don't think, I still need to, I still need to do some work on that. But I'm coming along. I think some of it too is paper selection. Paper selection is so important. Um, if you're using the wrong kind of paper, like the sometimes the, the the final fold just will not come out how you want it. And 
And that's okay. Uh, if you are looking for a good online source of paper, I recommend just checking out uh, origami-shop.com. They, uh, they are based in France, and they have all sorts of really splendid uh, papers. They're a little more expensive than what you would find on like Amazon or something for just regular, it's called Kami. Uh, David Brill uh, does not like that term. He's the uh, president of the British Origami Society. He says Kami. That just means paper in Japanese. And yeah, it, it does. But it, Kami typically refers to uh, just, just this kind of paper. So you'll see like a uh, hundred or thousand packs of, of stuff like this, um, and it's and it's very good. Um, it has the feel almost of just printer paper, probably a little bit thinner than that. But uh, it's really good for most of your basic and intermediate models. But as you get more and more complex, you're going to want to get um, higher quality folding paper for it. So yes, these are his books. I still have pieces of paper in here marking like, oh, I want to fold this one. So much to fold, so little time, I'm afraid. But, um, but yes, these are good for beginners and advanced students. So I would say these two are for more advanced folders here, origami design. And these three would be better for beginning to advanced, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. It has a little bit of each in these three. So if you're looking for something that's a little more accessible for getting into it, I would go with these three. What If you're already well established in the art and uh, want to challenge your skill, these are definitely the ones for you. But like I said, uh, be mindful of your paper choice, um, and, uh, and have fun with it. That's the main thing. Just have fun with it. But yeah, that is all I've got today on Robert J. Lang. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And hopefully, I will see you all next time.